everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here, my name is Rachel and today I'm doing my first update in my Pan 20 in 2020. My very first update this year is a little bit earlier than it has been in previous years and I don't know, I felt like I might want to space them out and do them slightly more often than quarterly so that you, you guys are having more than just like three updates and the finale during the year and I've got a lot to report and then at least you guys can kind of see how long it's taken me to hit my goals on things because sometimes with the quarterly um, updates you guys aren't really getting a good idea of how long it took because an update encompasses three months worth of time so it could have been a long time in that update since I actually finished a product so I just thought maybe this would be a bit more useful so let's get straight into it there's 20 products to talk about so you guys, this might be a longer video, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. Let's get straight on with it. The first product in my Pan 20 in 2020 is my Valentino Donna perfume. This is like a sample size. It's 10 milliliters and it is an eau de parfum. Sorry, I'm just checking my, my notes. I've got a list just over here. I've always got a cheat sheet. You guys know this. So if you see me glancing over there, that's what that is. And as you guys can see, there is not an awful lot of this left. And to be honest, I can notice a difference in the level of, you know, how much liquid is left after every single use. And that's just because there's so little of it. It's 10 milliliters. And I think I did have it about down to here. I think that's where it was up to when the project even started. So this will definitely be gone by the next update. I just know it. Um, this is not the most long lasting perfume I'm not actually particularly impressed with its lasting power compared to the original Valentino perfume I found I've never owned it but when I've when I've tried it on in shops I found it to be long lasting so I don't know maybe it's a cheaper version or something I actually don't know how much this is this came as like a gift with purchase but I do actually quite enjoy the scent I don't think I really want the full size though to be honest like I say I do prefer the ordinary um women's valentino you know the original then on to the second product it is my Kath Kidston hand cream this is a 30 milliliter um tube and it's quite small actually and I don't actually really like the scent of this it's a very rosy scent and it's just it's not one of those scents that I would have picked for myself it was a um, a gift and it does actually work really well as a hand cream it does feel nice and thick and kind of emollient on the on the hands without feeling too greasy it is really really thick in consistency if I just show you I will apply some and you can see it coming out it's really really thick and as a result it does feel very hydrating and it does feel non-greasy as well so which is quite nice so let me just finish rubbing it all in and what I've been doing to make sure that I'm getting regular usage out of this I use hand cream very regularly during the day every single day I work with a lot of paper um, and you know it does dry your hands out along with washing them and cleaning during the day and you know just lots of factors including the weather dry your hands out and when you've got dry skin to begin with you just got to take care of them um, but I don't like using this as my main hand cream I have a big sort of pump at work that I use and I really like that so what I've been doing is using this first thing in the morning after I've put my makeup on I then apply this to my hands before I leave the house and it's been working well I would probably estimate that I've got probably half of this left it's not so empty that I need to chop off the top yet so there must be you know enough left but it's really difficult to see because I kind of I can't really like see through the packaging it's really really opaque so my guess is that it's about halfway done I have been using it every single day since the beginning of the project and because it's quite thick and you know nourishing you don't need an awful lot the third product is a foundation and it is my Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation and I don't know who uh, told me this but one of you guys told me on a couple of occasions that Bourjois is being discontinued in the UK. I wasn't 
sure how to feel about that i love quite a few of bourgeois products and this is one of them and i think i was kind of in denial because each time i went into my local shop they still had the bourgeois and then just yesterday i went into my local boots and it was all cordoned off and had a big like cardboard sign on it saying bourgeois has you know bid au revoir to the uk it's probably something to do with brexit let's be honest i mean a lot of companies are withdrawing from the UK market and going elsewhere or taking their headquarters elsewhere, you know, just because of the whole mess. But it, it's upsetting, but there are ways around it. I'm sure I could find it on Amazon if I really needed to. Anyway, that's by the by, I've not even mentioned how I'm getting on with the product. Um, I've used this probably about four times since the beginning of the project. You guys know how ambitious I tend to be with foundations in project pans. They're some of the most enjoyable products to pan for me and I think it's basically because it's my problem area and I've got so many of them so I've wanted to incorporate as many as I possibly can so that I can start siphoning my way through them cycling my way through them rather than siphoning um yeah and I've not made an awful lot of progress with this but you will kind of see what I've been working on in the meantime I have obviously got other foundations within this project pan and within within other project pans as well so this one's not had a, a lot of love and attention at the minute but I'm not worried we are only still in February and there's the rest of the year to go. My fourth product has shown quite a lot of progress and I'm going to show you where it's up to at the minute and it is my Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone and you can kind of see there's a slither around here in the pan and what I'm going to do before I edit and upload this video is I'm going to repress it in the middle and I'll overlay a picture of what it looks like after it's been repressed because I appreciate you can't really see much there if I show you it's just kind of all collected right in the very you know corners of the pan you know right in the deep dark depths of the pan there and you can't really see it it's quite difficult to get some on your brush so I think I just need to admit defeat and repress it in the middle and that'll work so much better for me there is not an awful lot of this left I reckon if I used it every single day as a facial highlight and on my inner corners and brow bone I'm using it today all over for those purposes I really, really love this product. I think if I used it like that, there's probably about a month or six weeks worth of the product left. So I think that I'm gonna be bidding farewell to this very, very soon. It's been such a long lasting product. Highlighters last forever. And I've been enjoying working my way through the ones that I do have. And it just goes to show that the ones that I do have, I really, really enjoy. So I've kind of, I've hit my stride with highlighters and I really know what I enjoy and that's one of the things I really love about project panning. It really highlights what you like and what you don't like in products so that you can't make the same mistakes going forward or at least you're less likely to. So the next product, number five, is my MAC Rose Pigment and I haven't told you um, so far but all of the previous products that I mentioned my goal is to finish them up. This is one of the few products within this project that I'm not aiming to finish it up completely. I mean that'd be crazy. There is I think is it four grams worth of product in these? They are there's quite a lot in them. Anyway my goal with this one is to just half finish it so I'm hoping to get it down to about where my fingernail is and I would be happy with that. I would mark that as a success. I have used this so much since the beginning of the project and I don't even know if you'll be able to tell with the levels. I will obviously put a close up on the screen because I don't want to tip it and then spill it everywhere. But I feel like I've been doing so well. I've been using this product as much as I possibly can. I've been using it on my eyes. I've even used it on my nails and I really loved the effect. I did a home shellac um, nail manicure and I loved the way it turned out. I loved that nail look so much. And, you know, it's just a great way to incorporate it into my beauty routine and to use it up a little bit quicker. So the next product is a perfume and it is my Jimmy Choo Original Perfume. This is an Eau de Parfum and you can kind of see where the level is there. It's almost halfway down and I probably use this about four times since the beginning of the project. This hasn't been a perfume that I go to very much. 
I don't tend to wear this during the day. This tends to be a nighttime perfume for me if I'm going out with my other half or if we, you know, I go in the cinema, just anything really. If we're going out in the evening, this tends to be one of the ones that I go to. I don't know why, it's a bit more heady and a bit stronger than a lot of the perfumes that I lean towards toward for the daytime. But it doesn't have to be a nighttime perfume to be honest. It is a bit more heady and a bit more strong and it does scream nighttime to me, but I think I could get away with it during the day. I have worn it to work on a few occasions. It's one of those perfumes that is quite versatile, but like I say, I just tend to associate it with going out. I will start working on using this during the day, but I've got the rest of the year to go. I don't worry about perfumes. I seem to be able to use them up quite easily, especially given that I wear perfume every single day, so it's not too difficult for me. Product number seven is gone. This is my first product that I've hit my goal on and it is my Illamasqua Skin Base Foundation. This is the shade 6.5 and it's completely gone. I don't want to try and cut into it because I don't feel like I could. The plastic is really, really hard. And with this, I squeezed it and squeezed it and squeezed it until I kind of like deformed the actual packaging. What I really love about this foundation is it works so well with my dry skin. It really shows it in its best light. It doesn't highlight my dryness. It doesn't make me look older, which is one of the things that you do battle against when you've got dry skin is how to keep it looking young because I feel like it always can look a bit crepier and a bit more textured than oily skin and you know we just we each have our skin battles and this just makes it a bit easier to make myself look good I what is not to love about that so it is one of those foundations that I will repurchase when I have less foundations it is one of the ones that I am going to double back on and go back to and hopefully keep as a permanent within my collection going forward but at the minute I'm not repurchasing, I'm trying to really, really cut back on what foundations I've got in my collection. So the next product is also a success story and I have also hit my goal on it already and it is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Light and just look at that just look at it. If that is not a thing of beauty I do not know what is. This product was a bit of a mission to finish up I'm not gonna lie I've owned it for a long time and it just takes forever you don't need an awful lot of it although you can apply and apply and apply and you won't look like the tin man which is nice I tend to use it as a finishing powder and it just gives you that glow from within look without making you look shiny or greasy or oily so I don't know how well this would work for people who don't have dry skin and people who do have that oil production coming through during the day I'm not sure how this would work for you guys but on me it looks great all day and I just feel like I've got that healthy sort of you know dewy kind of appearance which what's not to love about that so I feel really happy that I've hit my goal on that one because I just wanted it gone. I've had it that long and although I've enjoyed it, it's just time to bid goodbye to it and move on. And I feel like, yay, I've done that now. The next product is proving challenging and it is my Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. And you can't really see where it's up to, but I think it's probably maybe up to about here. I can't really see. It doesn't really settle very well because it is quite a thick, gloopy consistency, but I feel like it's not gonna be long before I need to kind of take the stopper out because not a lot is coming out on the kind of spatula doe foot that we've got. It's kind of spatula shaped. This is not my favorite concealer ever at all. It does make my under eyes look crepey. It's too light to kind of spot conceal. So I'm struggling with using this on an everyday basis. I think what I'm gonna try and do in order to get moving with this, because I will have owned it for nearly a year pretty soon. And one of the things I'm gonna do to kind of move things along and get cracking with it is I might use it with a foundation to kind of just adjust the tone and you know get using it a bit quicker. So I might use it with a more um, fluid foundation, something like the Healthy Mix, mix them together and see how we get on. And that'd be a way of using the product without wasting it as such. But I'm 
it's never going to be a repurchase for me not even in the correct shade because it's just too drying and it's not nourishing enough for my skin so it just it isn't flattering under my eyes even if I leave it to not set and I don't set my under eyes it still looks kind of powdery and cakey and just not cute. So the next product is also difficult to tell where I'm up to with it but I can tell you that I have been making much better progress. I've been using it a lot more often and I'm wearing it right now and it is the KVD which is Kendo Vegan Beauty? Have they called it KVB now or is it still KVD? I don't know I'm really confused about what the name of it is but it's the one that used to be Kat Von D. <laughs> and it's the Bow and Arrow Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. I'm wearing it right now. This is one of those that I really, really enjoy and it is one of those liquid lipsticks that doesn't um, dry your lips out. It just, it doesn't look too thick. It doesn't look gloopy. It kind of just goes on like really breathable and it doesn't seem to like and suck all the moisture out of your skin your lips if you like liquid lipsticks you kind of will know what I'm talking about but this just feels like a thin veil of lip color that does dry down it is called the everlasting liquid lipstick but I don't feel like it lasts forever it maybe lasts through a couple of drinks and then I would need to like scrub it off and reapply this doesn't reapply well over itself you do kind of have to remove it somewhat and then reapply which can be a bit of a pig if you're out and about but if you just reapply this over the top it'll then just kind of look like you've got really dry cracked sort of non-cuteness I don't know how to describe it it looks like you've got a really thick layer of something on your lips and it looks really dry and horrible so there's that but it is one of my favorite liquid lipsticks that I do have just because when it's freshly applied it's one of those products that I will wear when I don't need something that's going to last forever and I know it'll look really nice so there's that I don't know where it's up to it's really difficult to tell but the doe foot still comes out with a good amount of product on it but I feel like I've been using this to death and I've been using it to death even before this project pan so there's a lot of product in this the next product is another highlighter and it is my Merry Luminizer highlighter by The Balm. You can't really see much progress with this because I've not been using it as much as I've been using the Becca one. I've been kind of really doubling down on using the Becca one and then I will go on to this one I think. So I probably use this maybe maximum of five or six times during the project so far. I didn't want to not use it at all and then you know regret it but I have used it quite a few times and then on the days when I've not applied it to my face I've applied it to my inner corners and my brow bones instead and then I feel like I'm getting a little bit of use from both so I'm not worried at this stage I do not know if I'm going to be able to use it completely by the end of the year I might have bitten off more than I can chew but we are only in February so I'm going to stay hopeful that I can get it used up but we'll see I'll try my best Next we're on to a product that I am very very close to finishing up and I don't know how much is left of it and it is my NYX Glitter Primer. This has become an everyday staple for me. I do not apply any shimmer without putting this on my lid and one of the um, brands that kind of pushed me towards that is Anastasia Beverly Hills because I love their shimmers but they just halfway through the day they sod off my eyelids and go elsewhere and you know you can't even tell that I've got a shimmer on the lid anymore so I started wearing it with the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadows that I've got the shimmers but then I quickly realized that if I use it with other shimmers they last longer they look brighter and I don't have to kind of foil my um my brushes so I don't have to have a MAC Fix Plus or something that I have to spray my brush every single time and it doesn't end up lasting at all and the MAC Fix Plus is expensive let's be honest if you're just going to foil your eyeshadows with it. So I've not got a lot of this left and I'm really going to miss it when it's gone. It's going to have to be a repurchase because it's just changed my makeup game. It just makes my shimmers look so much shimmerier. It just makes my shimmers look 
so much more glistening on the eyes and they just last longer I just love it so there's not an awful lot of this left but obviously because it's kind of a glue and it's tacky I don't feel like I can snip the end off it because I feel like it'll just dry out and whoop, and it will just be a wasted amount of product that's left so I'm just gonna have to live with it and keep squeezing the life out of this tube to get the rest out but this is gonna be gone pretty soon Next is another tube encased product and it is my Soap and Glory Scrub Your Nose In It uh, Facial Scrub. This is kind of um, an AHA facial scrub and I actually find that this doesn't irritate my sensitive skin all that badly. My face always goes red no matter what I exfoliate it with but this doesn't make it hurt, it doesn't make it feel tight and I only leave it on for a very short amount of time. There is not much left of this. This is 100 millilitres in this tube and there's not a lot left of it at all. I use this maximum twice a week and I'll do it while I'm in the bath. I've already got wet, a wet face, you know, with nothing on it. I've already cleansed. I'll just put it on my face, leave it for two minutes and then kind of gently massage it off gently being the operative word and then I rinse it off and it gets rid of all of the dead skin and the crap and it just helps keep my skin not as textured and it works really well actually and I've got no worries I feel like this will be gone by the end of the year especially given that I use it twice a week quite religiously so I really enjoy this. The next product is another foundation and it is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I'm wearing this today and it's probably up to about here now. I've been using this so much. I've been really, really concentrating on this since I used up my Illamasqua Skin Base. This is makeup that makes your face look brilliant, especially if you're not up close. This isn't the greatest for dry skin if you're going to use it every single day. This is a once in a while sort of foundation for me but I have been wearing it every day for the last sort of two or three weeks and I can tell like my skin is not particularly happy about it. I've got a little friend here, I've got little friends here and I do feel like it's because of this foundation. I don't think it is designed to wear it as often as I'm wearing it but I'm doing that in order to get it used up. So I feel like I'm going to have to take a little bit of a break from this and work on the other ones that I've got that are a bit more moisturising like my, um, my Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum. I feel like I'm just going to have to take a little break from this because my skin is very much showing me that it's not happy and it does end up looking a bit drier and a bit, you know, a bit more dehydrated on my skin because I, my skin is not used to wearing this very often. So I don't have any problems thinking that I'm going to be able to use it up. I do think I'm going to be able to use it up by the end of the year. It's, I don't think that that is going to be unachievable by any means. But I do think that I just need to cool it off for a little while and go on to something else and not use it so religiously. The next product is a powder product and I am aiming to hit pan on it. It is my Wet n Wild Colour Icon Baked Blush. This is a limited edition shade called Don't Flutter Yourself and it's a very, very sort of pastel, metallic, ye uh, yellow, where is yellow coming from? Pinky, blush, toppery, highlightery situation. I couldn't wear this as a blush, it's far too metallic for that and I don't feel like I could wear it as a highlighter because it does have a quite strong icy pink undertone and I just wear this over the top of my blush just to give some extra shimmeriness to my cheeks and it looks so fresh, I really really enjoy it so much. I'm aiming to hit pan on this and at the minute I feel like I um working my way into a dip in the middle so I'm not sure how long this is going to take me to be honest. I'm hoping that if I can hit pan on this by about the autumn I will call that a success but I have been using this very very regularly so you know I'm just going to try my best. I do feel like it's doable but I can't really tell just by looking at the pan right now how long it's going to take because I don't know how deep the pan is. I I'm just not getting any clues by looking at it but hopefully within the next sort of six months <laughs> that's about as clear as mud isn't it so 
anyway we'll move on the next product is another perfume and it is my Guerlain Mon Guerlain and this is 100 milliliters. It's an eau de parfum. I don't even know if this has gone down since the intro but I have used it a few times. I am wearing this one today. This is one of those perfumes that I just adore and it could be used equally for a daytime as an evening and it's just it's just a scent that I smell and I just think oh it's just gorgeous. Love it. This will be used up by the end of the year, I am convinced of it because I'm just addicted to the smell, I love it so much. Sticking with the extra luxurious products, the next one is another foundation and it is my Chanel Sublimage La Tante foundation. This I've not been using extremely regularly but I've probably used this about six or seven times since the beginning of the Project Pan. and. I feel like I've made quite a dip in it to be honest. I feel like I'm making some headway. I've not used this just as a foundation the whole time. On a couple of occasions I've used it just as a concealer under my eyes because it's got that lovely hydrating skincare quality to it. It's got kind of a gel based formula so it, it is quite nice and hydrating on the skin. And on the days where I felt like I need a little bit more than my Fenty concealer because it's drying. On days when I feel like I need a bit more nourishment than that I have been plopping a little bit of this underneath my eyes and I've been really enjoying the effect of it but otherwise I have been using it as a foundation. I really really enjoy it. I wouldn't be able to wear it today because it wouldn't quite cover up the little friends that I've got on my face. This isn't a high high coverage foundation. This is like a medium coverage at best but it is supposed to be more of a natural foundation that just shows your skin through it and looks more, you know, fresh. The next product is a hair care product and it is my TG Small Talk 3-in-1. Uh, this is the mini one, um, TG Bed Head Range. It is up to about here now and I don't know if that really looks like I've used much of it but I've been using this really quite a lot. I've been using this each time I've washed my hair. I've been sm like putting a smoothing a bit through the ends of my hair. This is great for giving my hair a bit more volume. I don't know if you can kind of tell but my hair has a propensity to look a bit more flat because it's really really fine. I have a lot of hair but the actual shafts of my hair are really 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 thin. Like you, you look at my hair in the light and they're so so tiny. So I've been using this in conjunction, um, like kind of alternating it with the mousse that I've got in my new Decade Project Pan. I love the smell of this. I think it's called Blueberry Dream, the scent, and it's just, it smells like the perfect candied blueberry. It's gorgeous and it just really enhances the hair care experience. When I'm smoothing it through my hair before I dry it, I just, I just love it. And then I have to smell my hands and it's just a whole experience. I love that. Um, I do I do not know if I'm going to be able to use this up by the end of the year. I, I hope so because obviously my hair is ever growing and I have noticed that I, I am needing to use a bit more as my hair grows so maybe that will work in my favour for using it up but as a product I just really really enjoy this. And then the penultimate product is my Kiko Lip Liner in the shade 301. And as you can see, I have used quite a lot of this. I've been using it nearly every day since the beginning of the Project Pan. I'm wearing it today with my Kat Von D or KVD, Kendo Vegan Beauty, whatever it's called, lip line, uh, lipstick. And there's not much left of this, as you can see. I will show you a... Um, a picture of how it measures up compared to last time on a piece of paper so you can kind of see but there is a lot of usage with this I have no qualms about the fact that I'm going to be able to use this up by the end of the year it's super creamy and it does do a nice crisp line as well I feel like it's the best of both worlds because sometimes if a lip liner is too creamy you can't get a crisp line it just kind of smooshes everywhere this doesn't do that and they are really quite inexpensive really recommend this range. It's the one with the golden um, pencil, would you call it a shaft? A pencil <laughs> bit. The gold ones, 
really love it anyway so we'll move on I've said shaft far too many times in this video but the final product is another perfume and it is my ghost 150 milliliters and as you guys can see we have the tiniest amount left I mean don't get me wrong this wasn't anywhere near full when I was at the beginning of the project pan it was up to about here so not an awful lot when you think about it but um I think this is doable that's probably maybe about a week's worth of perfume left in the bottom there maybe and I do love the ghost scent as you guys know I've been through bottle after bottle after bottle on my channel in the last few years and it is always a repurchase so it's definitely going to get used up so I'm going to wrap up this update very quickly because this video has been very long if you're still here at this point of the video thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it at the end of the first update I have now hit my goal on two of the 20 products that's a pretty solid start I believe it's like 10% of the products that I'm working on so although I would have liked to have hit my goal on more products I think two is a solid start and I'm feeling quite optimistic about how we're going to go going forward so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye guys